What is going on everyone? It's Brody back again with another tennis question. And today's tennis topic is going to be about what you need to look for in an older tennis racket if you're thinking about using it or buying it. Now, when using or buying an old tennis racket, there's a few things that you need to know. One of the main things is, how is this racket gonna play? That's one of the biggest questions on any tennis player's mind, and there's a few ways that you can look at this. So let's say, let's give an example of you use the racket, the head gravity, and we won't go into the specific ones, but let's say you use the original head gravity that came out, it had green on one side, it had red on the other side. So if you're looking around online, whether it be eBay, Facebook, other racket resellers, if you find a head gravity that is blue, not blue, green and red on each side, then you most likely know how that racket is going to play because that is the one you are using. There's no real reason to doubt it. Yes, there are different versions of the racket itself, so you have to get a little bit more specific. However, it's going to be the same model, the same make, then you should be and feel pretty confident that you are getting the same racket that you know and you love. Now, if you're looking into rackets that are used and are not the same type of racket that you have used before, there's a few things that you need to look at. One of the first things to look at is the actual frame of the racket itself. If you can see that there's a lot of chips in the paint, if you can see that there's a lot of damage to the racket, sometimes that can put people off, but if you only see like one small chip in the paint anywhere on the racket, most especially resale brands, if they're old, it's not gonna knock off the price that much, but if you go to actual tennis retailers and they have a chip in the paint, you can usually get a very high discount on those rackets. Now, granted, you have to see what the actual store is going to do with that, but little pro tip for you, you can probably find a good discount if you find a chip in the racket that, and it's just out on the floor like that. Now, with the older rackets, you can expect that they're gonna be chipped, so you have to be a little bit more careful about what you actually look for. If the paint is almost entirely stripped away, like you can see that this racket has been beat on the ground multiple times throughout its life and you can barely see the original color, it might be one you should probably stay away from. Just a thought. Now, if you're looking at these rackets again, one of the other things to look for is the grommets. A lot of people don't necessarily know what the bumper grommet does and this is one of the, this is essentially the lifeline of the racket because if you don't have a working bumper guard you don't have a working racket because you cannot put the strings inside of the racket if you if the bumper guard is worn down or you can see it one of the main ways you can tell with this is that especially at the top where a lot of players if they go for a low ball they have the racket they go down they go for a slice or just kind of trying to get that low volley if they're hitting the ground with it a lot, one of the things you can do is the bumper guard will wear off and then you can try and almost push your thumb, your pointer finger, any type of anything really. If you can push down and you go inside the racket, you can hear it start to like crack a little, don't go with it. That racket cannot be restrung. It is just waiting to explode. You're just gonna get hurt because the structure and the integrity of the racket itself is compromised. Do not go forward, do not pass go, leave it there, and maybe alert the shop owners like, hey, this thing, this racket can no longer really be used because it's dangerous. Now, when I say dangerous, that is because it's just going to cause a lot more vibration to come back to whoever is using it, so it can lead to more serious injuries like tennis elbow, fatigue, or anything else like the sort. So. Be aware of it, alert the people who own the racket or are trying to resell it, and go about your day. Now, there are a few other things with looking into older used rackets. There is how the grip is. I actually had a friend of mine, and this was when I, this was a few years ago. I was working in, the ten, in a tennis store and I had sold him a used racket because he's like, I don't want to spend a lot of money. I just want a brand new racket to him not brand new, meaning like fresh off the, sh off the shelf, but he wanted a new one for him. So what can you do to where you have a decent racket 
that is a cheaper price that may be used that I can actually work with. And I was like, gotcha. So I got him a Pure Arrow 2015 edition. And as you know, those things were a little bit notorious for breaking. So lo and behold, given it about, since this was an, a used racket and I was like, okay, I explained to him this is used. So it's gonna be a little less stable than some of the others. But he's like, no, it should be fine. I trust you. And I was like, I looked at it. I had vetted it myself. I was like, okay, this should be good. And lo and behold, three days later, I get a text from him. He's like, hey, the racket handle broke. I would, and I looked at that message like, huh? What do you mean? And he sent me a picture of it. And the racket handle itself, which is usually one solid piece, just snapped in half when he was playing with it during a high school match. I was like, okay. So luckily we were able to get it all taken care of. He came back in the store, we swapped it out because at the time we had, enough, we had another one of the rackets so we, we got him taken care of. But that's something you have to look out for is cracks in the frame, not only on the outer side of the frame where you can see a lot of it, but you also want to make sure that in, as you hold the racket in your hand and you do a few shadow swings with it, whether your forehand, your backhand, whatever stroke you choose, you want to make sure that you have a nice connected feeling to the racket so that it is not like my friend's example, it's not broken to where you don't know about it until it's too late. Now there are a few up and with that being said, there are a few other things that you can look forward to with trying to figure out with the older rackets. Not all of them are gonna work for the same. So if you have the ability to actually try them out on the court before you do purchase, I know with older rackets, that's not usually a thing just because they're old. They just, the stores just wanna get rid of them. But if you can, always go ahead, demo the racket first, see what you think about it, see if it even fits your play style. Cause there's a lot of rackets for a lot of different types of players. If you find one you like, you probably won't like one other specific type. I won't get into the specific details here in this video, but if you guys are thinking about that and you wanna know what some of the more specific types of rackets are, leave a comment down below so I know that, and that way I can get more information on it and get that ready for you and get a, get a new video out covering the topic. So with that being said, if you like the video, leave a like on it, comment down below, like I said, any more questions about video recommend recommendations you may have, as, as well as just any questions you have about looking into older rackets and what to look for, as well as what not to look for in purchasing an old racket so that it, so that it, it will actually work for you, not just disintegrate in your hands. And as always, subscribe to the channel so that we can grow this channel. I saw a lot of tennis misinformation in the tennis community, so I took it upon myself to make this channel so that we can get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. And as always, take care.